All right. Good morning, everyone. This is Pam Batchelor, and I am uh, the product manager for Go Open NC, and I'm excited to be with you today um, for our home base meetup for Go Open. Um, I'm excited for all of our collaborators to be joining. Um, this will be the first time that many of us have been um, virtually in the same room. So I'm excited to welcome everyone. Uh, just a couple of quick notes. I am going to put in the chat our slide deck link. Uh, so please make sure you open up the slide deck. You're going to want to click on the various links I have in there. Um, we also have um, some guests with us today. So we have some our home base manager, Dr. Rob Dietrich, is going to speak in just a moment. Uh, so we're very excited to have you and to connect with you today during the home base meetup. Uh, just a couple of things about WebEx. Um, we are using WebEx for our webinar today. It is being recorded, so a recording will be sent out. Um, you'll have that in case anyone has to leave early or um, wasn't able to make it today, they'll have the recording. So in WebEx, you do have chat, which many of you are finding. It is the um, it looks like a speech bubble on your um, desktop. If you click on that, that opens up the chat. Um, we also have a Q&A feature where you can ask questions that are just seen by the panelists and the host. Uh, so feel free to do that as well. We're also going to be using a Padlet today as our back channel. So I encourage you to kind of put questions um, on the Padlet if you can. So that way everyone can see them uh, because the question that you have is more likely a question that everyone has. If you are having trouble um, with your audio, um, in uh, WebEx, you can click on this getting started guide on slide two. Um, there's also, if you click on these three dots here on the, your panel, it'll say switch audio, and you can switch from the computer audio to a call-in audio um, with your cell phone if you are having any audio issues. Also, we do have everyone muted because I'm aware of a uh, like you know there's a lot of roles that were hats that we're wearing and you might be multitasking at this time um, if you would like to be unmuted we do welcome that um, you'll notice that next to your um, the list of participant names and you'll see your own name there's a little uh, microphone and then there's a raise hand icon so if you raise your hand or use that little megaphone to give any feedback i'll be watching and unmuting so feel free to do that at any point in time. You can also type in the chat that you would like to be unmuted and we will unmute you so you can share. All right, so as I mentioned before, we will have a Padlet that we are using um, for today for our back channel discussion. So I'm gonna put this link in the chat, uh, but please make sure that you um, use Padlet throughout the meeting. You will see that there's a space for topics that you want to discuss. So I have prepared uh, some slides, but I'm happy to kind of take away from that and we can dive into a discussion. This meeting is all about you and your needs and your uh, training that you'd like to receive when go open. If you have any questions, you can click on that plus icon on the Padlet to add. I'm also interested in training ideas. Um, we are wrapping up our training for the fall um, with webinars and mini courses that I've built. And I'd love your ideas for things you'd like to see in the spring, things that could be helpful uh, for you to share out about Go Open. I also have a couple of resources. I've put in the slide deck as well as our list of collaborators. Um, so I'm hoping to grow that list and we'll talk about it in just a few minutes. And then lastly, I would love for any successes um, I see Carrie's with us. Carrie, I'm going to put you on the spot about sharing in a few minutes about um, your hub. And so I'd love any successes from Go Open, um, any cool, like, cool things that you'd like to share, please add those to the Padlet. All right, so we're going to get started with just a few updates. And as I mentioned earlier, um, my home base manager, Dr. Rob Dietrich, is with us, and he's going to um, share a little bit about our opening slide deck for you to know a little bit more about the home base team. 
Good morning, everybody. It is very good to be here with you. Um, I believe that Go Open uh, NC is one of the most important products we have because it's built by teachers for teachers. And I don't think anything gets more directly impactful in the classroom than that. So I think it's fantastic. And Pam does such a wonderful job kind of managing this and working with this program. Um, I, I think we've talked about the opening slides and you've put all the links in, right? Yeah, next slide, please. We are going to talk a little bit more about this, but here are all the call signs for home base. So please make sure that you are paying it, paying attention to these. I'm going to talk more about our Facebook page here in a minute at home base. There's um, where is hashtag go open NC. So please make sure that you are following us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all those items. And we're going to talk about it more here shortly. Next slide, please. Pam has already talked about that. We're going to move on from that. So we are really excited to be here. This is our favorite time of the year. We love to get out and see you guys and be a part and work with you and try to get the feedback that you can offer us to make our products better to serve your needs. These are very, very uh, productive, we think, for us, and we hope you feel the same way. Next slide, please. Our agenda is at, I'm going to do a little bit of a welcome and then Pam's going to take over and give you updates on Go Open and then a point CEU, point one CEU will be given. And there's the slide deck again. Please, next slide. This is our last home base meetup of this, of this session. We've had all the previous ones before. I'm sure some of you have seen us before. Well, I'll talk more about this in a minute. Um, next slide, please. There are the dates. We have another one, February 15th through the 19th and April 26th through April 30th. Please make sure to put these on your calendar because we do believe it is so important to see you and be a part of, the, of this journey with us. Next slide, please. We are home base and we are part of digital teaching and learning. And one thing I think is very important you to be aware of are all the resources we have out there. Digital teaching and learning, we have a website that takes you to all the resources, the digital teaching and learning standards, so you can be up with those. And during this time, we're currently in this non-traditional pandemic time. We have the North Carolina Remote Learning and Resources and Information and Lighting Our Way Forward information that uh, are ready for you to use. And I believe that there are good things for you. Next slide, please. Sorry about that. We also have the home base uh, website for you to use, and that is for all information home base, and that you can get all the information, QRDs, training, webinars, everything you need for home base. If you're not sure what home base is and you are on this, um, on this meetup, please go to that website and you can learn more about all our products. Next, next slide, please. As I mentioned, we are very big on social media. We're trying to increase our digital footprint. You have all the did you knows there. You have one from Go Open right there in the middle. Did you know that there's 11 hubs on Go Open NC and that a hub contains curated resources and groups around a specific topic with a link to that resource? We have something for learning.com. We have something for Canvas and we have something for Nesis up there, but other products are out there as well. Next slide, please. So you see the did you know? It's happening every Wednesday, like clockwork, home-based topics, links to resources, very good. But the only way you're gonna get them is if you go to Facebook, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter. Our likes have grown tremendously. Help us get to 500 likes. You can help us do that. So please visit and, and make that happen for us. Next slide, please. I do want to give some key information. Learning.com funds will revert back by November 30th if they're not spent, so please remember that. If you're on this call and you're interested in Imagine Math, we currently have 28 slots available for you to choose from. So please contact Dr. Carmela Fair or myself, and we'll be happy to help. There are webinars, uh, one later today, and, and or next week, wait, yep, today, and one on the 23rd. Next slide, please. 
And Canvas, if you're interested in Canvas funding with PRC 165 and 166, Pam, wonderful Pam Bachelor and Jill Darrow, they have they did a webinar recording and I have posted it there so that you have access to, to view it and learn all the information and get all the information you need towards PRC 165 and 166. Quick note on PowerSchool, we're switching to core contacts in January and we're gonna upgrade to a new version in December, very minor changes, and then a more robust in, in later in the spring. Next slide, please. And please make sure you are keeping up with who the leads are in your district. Please make sure you're contacting Yolanda Wilson to make sure that that is constantly updated, as well as I believe um, Pam is also looking for Go Open collaborators, which she mentioned here shortly. So hopefully some of you on this call will be able to jump in and, and become a Go Open collaborator with us as well. Next slide, please. Here you have every slide deck that has occurred this week. So please make sure you open the link. It, it, communication is the most important thing we do out to the field to make sure you're aware of everything we have to offer for you to make your classroom a much better experience, especially through a digital platform. So please make sure you visit these slide decks, the ones that are important to you, you view them and see them. You now have every single slide deck from the week there. So please make sure to view them. Next slide, please. Most important slide, I've said it all week. I wish everybody on this call a happy Thanksgiving. We've been running a marathon since March, and I think we can start to see the finish line. We're all working extremely hard long hours to make sure the students continue to get a quality education, whether they're in a classroom or in front of a computer at home. It's extremely important though next week that we are thankful for what we have and we take time for ourselves and for our families. So I wanna thank you for the work you do on a daily basis. No, we're here for you, we support you and happy Thanksgiving, happy holidays and Merry Christmas because we won't see you again until February. Next slide, please. And there is our great home base staff. Myself as home base manager, Pam Batchelor, Justin Connor, Cami Naren, Tessa Hine, John Mayers, Yolanda Wilson, Audrey Long, Russell Dixon, and Dr. Carmela Fair is not on here, but she's also helping us with Imagine Math, so I need to get her added to this. We are very happy to be here, more importantly, to serve you and meet your needs. If there's anything you need, please contact one of the people here and we will point you in the right direction to get you there. Pam, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today. You have a wonderful session. I'm going to have to leave a little early in this one, but you have a wonderful session and thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Rob. We appreciate you sharing uh, the updates with us to help keep us in the loop about things happening with home base. I'm going to go back to our original slide deck here. And if you'll notice in the top right corner of most of the slides, you'll see our little turkey um, and he is linked to our Padlet that I mentioned earlier. So as you have questions, um, topics that you wanna discuss later on, because we will have plenty of time uh, for open discussion with our group, uh, please make sure you are adding uh, those questions and topics to the Padlet. Um, just to give you a few updates on things that I've been working on to help support you um, with Go Open and See, um, we have uh, new self-paced mini courses available on Go Open and See. The first one launched this month in November, um, and that is on curating resources in Go Open and See. So it is a, a course that's designed to take about an hour to complete in Canvas. It has a pre-recorded webinar that's about 30 minutes long. And then there are a couple of reflection activities um, in the course. And once it's completed, it automatically applies a transcript, um, the credit for point one CEU to your credit um, to your transcript in uses. There we go. Uh, so we're excited about these because we feel like they're going to be a more flexible and accessible option um, for whenever you have time versus having to um, schedule a webinar at a certain time and joining them. I am open to any type of feedback that I can to make the courses better or um, any feedback you have in them uh, versus offering webinars that are live. Uh, please let me know. But so far, um, we've had about 20 people complete the Go Open course, and I've had about 50 people 
uh, complete the Canvas course because I'm also doing the same format for Canvas. So earlier this week, um, I had the privilege of being able to share about Go Open at our CETA conference, which is for state education leaders across the nation. Uh, so I just wanted to point out that I was um, fortunate enough to be part of a panel discussion uh, regarding our culturally relevant teaching professional learning that we've had um, on Go Open. Uh, so kind of intersecting how open education resources um, can really lend um, that quality lens as you're looking at resources for quality, can you also be looking at them for bias and making sure that they are, um, you know, appropriate and model cultural competencies. Uh, so that way we're inclusive of all students' cultures um, and then also building high quality, um, rigorous instruction with our instructional materials. So I was very excited to be able to represent North Carolina and uh, show Go Open and See and Several states were very interested in the work we're doing, and North Carolina is really leading um, as far as having culturally relevant uh, teaching professional learning. So exciting to go on that. Um, so our next course uh, for going back to the courses will launch December 1st. And then I don't have any topics yet for the spring. So I'm hoping that over the course of today, and if you need more time to think about it, you certainly can. Um, you'll add to the Padlet uh, with our training ideas for the spring. Uh, so, you know, what would you like to see on um, Go Open that that might could help with a need that you have? Um, I, I know one thing that's been kind of in the back of my brain is um, I've been asked a couple of times for resources for beginning teachers. So, you know, would it be helpful if I did a mini course just for beginning teachers on Go Open? Let me know. Uh, put that in the Padlet if you like that idea. But I want to spend um, the next little chunk of time getting to know each other because, um, as I mentioned, uh, several of you are here because you are now Go Open and Seek collaborators, which is what I'm calling our group of users and leaders across the uh, state uh, for your public school admin. So I would love for you to either, if you are in a place where you can speak, if you could um, either raise your hand or use the little um, megaphone. Uh, to give you some feedback and I can unmute you. Or if you would just put in the chat your name, um, your public school unit, and um, your favorite Thanksgiving dish. So if you could put those things in the chat or raise your hand to be unmuted and I'll unmute you, but share with us your name, um, your role, and your public school unit and your favorite Thanksgiving dish. All right, so now I'm getting hungry reading the chat. Um, so Amy mentioned that she loves sweet potato casserole with mush with marshmallows from Johnson County. Brenda is talking about turkey and cream potatoes and gravy. Rob likes stuffing. I'm a, I I love green bean casserole. That's my favorite. Um, Lauren. Okay, the chat's going too fast for me to go. I'll, just, I'll catch up in a second. Interestingly enough, there's no turkey. One person said turkey. Oh, didn't see that. Okay. Yeah, but mm, green bean casserole, yes. Oh, collards? Depends on who, you, uh, who cooks them for me. Um, I'm kind of, uh, my mother in law makes really good collards. So I'm kind of, I never liked them until she made them. <laughs> Tracy says all the stuff. I I am excited about that chance to reconnect next week. Yes. Oh, and Jan likes turkey with giblet gravy. I have never been successful in making giblet gravy. Uh-huh. Me and gravy have a long history. It's not, it's never been good. <laughs> Uh, 
Ooh, corn pudding. Yes, I love corn pudding too, Lauren. All right. Well, thank you for putting that in the chat. If anyone anyone wants to be brave and add a comment. Oh, coconut cream pie. Mm. That's a new Thanksgiving dish I might I might get approved of. Ooh, pumpkin roll. Yes, Amy. You know. So I am going to jump over to the pilot for one second because we talked about collaborators, but I do want to show you. Um, so I'm on a mission. My mission is to get one person at least from every PSU in the state, and there's 315 of them when you include uh, charter schools and um, school districts. So I'm on a mission to get at least one person to be our collaborator and champion for Go Open. Uh, so, as you can see from this list, not quite there yet. Um, what I would like to say is I would like for you to take a second to look at this list. And I'm going to, let's see, open in a new window and put this in the chat. If you do not see your name on this collaborator list. If you go to this link at the top that says public school collaborators, that takes you to this form where you can put your name and information in here. And that way I know that you are a collaborator for your public school unit and I can make sure that you're on all of our email lists and that you get all of the latest um, information about Go Open MC. So if you would take a second to look at this list and if you do not see your name on it, take a second to fill out that form. Help me on my mission. And if you happen to know somebody in a neighboring form, uh, in a neighboring school or um, district that could help reach out, send this form to them and say, hey, I didn't see your name on this list of collaborators. Come join me. And if there's, uh, you know, something that needs to be updated, if you want to email me, um, I can be happy to update the form. If there's somebody who's maybe has transitioned to a different role, um, I can update that. Any questions about the collaborator list? Awesome. All right. Thank you. So going back to the slide deck, I do have another activity for us to help get to know each other and also um, kind of know uh, what you have and haven't done on Go Open NC. So we are going to play, as I have my little background music there, Never Have I Ever Go Open NC Edition. So I have 10 statements, and you will give yourself a point if that statement that I read is true and something you have done. All right, so any questions about never have I ever before we get started? All right, so everyone is responsible for keeping up with your own scoring. So whether you want to use your um, handy scoring, uh, self-scoring fingers um, and keep track of, as I read the statements, how many points you have, uh, we will see who the winner is. All right, statement number one. Never have I ever searched for a resource by keyword on Go Open NC. Statement 
statement number two. Never have I ever searched for a resource by standards on Go Open and see. Everyone keeping track of their points of how many they have so far? All right, statement number three. Never have I ever shared a resource to Google Classroom or a Canvas from Go Open and see. Statement four, never have I ever joined a group on Go Open NC. All right, statement five, never have I ever created a group on Go Open NC. All right, we're halfway through. Does anyone have five points? Yay, Amy, Amy says she does. Okay, we're gonna keep going then. Here's the next one. All right, never have I ever added my own resource to go open and see. So Brittany, you get a point for everything you have done. So if you have added your own resource to go open and see, you get a point. All right. Never have I ever added, oh, sorry. Never have I ever looked at a hub on Go Open and see. So have you checked out any of our hubs? All right, statement number eight. Never have I ever responded to a discussion forum on Go Open and see. Two more left. Statement nine, never have I ever used the help center on Go Open NC. Last one, never have I ever saved resources to a folder on Go Open NC. All right. I'm going to give everyone a second. What I want you to do is type your score in the chat, but do not press enter or send the chat until I count down from three. We're going to do it all at once. So put your score in the chat, but we're going to release the countdown. So don't send it yet. We'll give about 10 more seconds for you to get your score in the chat, and then we'll do the countdown. And we'll see who our winners are. All right, we're going to count backwards from three. So when I get to one, send your scores in the chat. All right, three, two, one. Send those scores. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I, I see a couple of nines. All right. It looks like we have a tie. So Mary has a nine. And so does Carrie. All right. So Mary, I'm curious. What's the one thing you haven't done? And Carrie, too, I'm curious what your one thing is. Ah, okay, so Mary hasn't shared a resource yet. And Carrie's is the same thing. Okay, so now um, there's a challenge for you to do uh, share Canvas or Google Classroom. So I'm wondering if from our game, is there anything, those statements that I read off, is there anything that people didn't know you could do in Go Open? If there's something up there that you didn't know you could do that you'd like me to show you in a little bit, add it to our Padlet as a topic and we'll cover them, okay? So if I said something and you're like, oh, I didn't know that I could add my own resources or I didn't know I, there's hubs, 
add it here to those topics you want to discuss, and we'll get to them in a little bit. And I'm going to put that link to the Padlet right back in the chat in case you need it again. All right, so we're gonna take a minute and we're gonna celebrate, throw some virtual confetti. Um, I've looked for, there's actually a couple of different Chrome apps or extensions that can use the throw confetti, um, but apparently none of them work with um, our, our browser settings. So um, here's what I could do. I could, I could give you a, I could give you a Giphy. So here's a Giphy throwing some confetti around Mary and Carrie for being our winners. Uh, but really, we're all winners because hopefully we're discovering different things about Go Open and see. <laughs> all right. So I do have some resources up here that I wanted to share with you. Um, I keep finding myself saying the same three things over and over about Go Open and see. Um, that there's um, kind of ways to create, there's ways to curate, and then there's ways to collaborate, right? So that's kind of like the three main uh, functions that I see in Go Open and see, right? And so I did have a couple of tutorials that are new, that as of new as of last night, um, that I wanted to show you. Um, so I, I found this new tool called IORAD. I don't know if anyone has heard of IORAD before. Um, but in case any of you are in the uh, business of providing instructions to others, IORAD, which is all of us, right? Because we all provide instructions to others, um, makes these really cool, easy tutorials um, for everything. Like if I was still in the classroom, there would be a tutorial for everything my kids would be doing. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's just how I am with that. Um, anyone else feel me on the gold? Like, yeah, that, that, it, there's an instruction manual for everything. Um, so we have two uh, tutorials here that I just made last night. Uh, so the first one is about creating a group. Because when I think about you guys as collaborators, I really want to make sure that you have the tools and the, and the empowerment to go out there and connect with educators in whether they're in your school, whether they're in your entire district. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that you had the skills here to create a group and also to add resources. Um, so we'll go through creating a group first. And then um, Carrie, if you wouldn't mind, I would love for you to either in the chat or I'll unmute you, um, just talk a little bit about the great work you're doing uh, with Moore County Schools Hub. All right. So we're going to create a group, and this link here takes you to our tutorial, and I'm putting it in the chat, so that way you can actually see what IORAD looks like. Um, so we have, it's a 14 steps, and it should take us about two minutes to create a group and go open. And then I'm actually going to, I'm just going to briefly walk through this. The first step is to open hashtag go open and click groups. So in case you've click never see seen IORAD before, um, you, it automatically takes all these screenshots for you. Um, basically, it's a Chrome extension. I click on the button to start recording, and then I go through my steps, and then I go back. Click create a group. And... Edit. Type the name of your group. Any for of the text. Teachers as makers. I also generated voice for this one. Um, there's several different voices that you can choose. So I love that because I'm a little tired of hearing my own voice on recordings, like the recording for today. I know it's inevitable, but if there's a choice for me to add some variety, and not use my own voice, <laughs> I will. <laughs> Click next. Describe. And like. Click professional development or the applicable subject areas. I have to say the voices on IORED are actually really good because um, I used to use some other ed tech tools that would generate voices and they were very mechanical. It was, you know, robot voice. I feel like they have some pretty good ones on IORED. Click highlight. Type highlight the grade levels. Click next. Just 
Type out a description for your group. Click Next, Permissions. And if you don't want the voice, you can click on the little speaker, and that way you just have the steps. And that's it, right? So it's pretty simple. We're gonna actually, I'm gonna go on Go Open, and uh, we are going to create a group. Just to make sure everyone knows. All right, so the first and most important thing when you uh, go to Go Open, whether you're using the URL to the site directly, which I'll put in the chat, or if you're going in through NC Ed Cloud. Um, so if you go in through NC Ed Cloud and click on the North Carolina icon for Go Open NC, which is this uh, blue green state, um, you'll automatically be signed in. But since I went directly through the URL, I have to sign in. And I'm actually already signed in on another browser, so I just clicked on sign in and then it, it recognized that I was already signed in. Um, but you have to be, in order to create a group, you have to be signed in. So just always make sure that you look and make sure you're signed in. So we're going to go into groups, see all groups. And I do ask that before you create a group, you always go and search first, just to make sure that group is not already created. Uh, because we do want to make sure that, you know, if I'm a school library media coordinator, um, and I'm looking for a group to connect with other school library media coordinators. If we all create our own groups, then we're going to have little pockets of, you know, I created a group and there's 10 school library media coordinators, and then maybe Kathy Park created another group and there's 75 on hers. Uh, so just always do a quick search first um, to make sure that, you know, you don't have a group. But if you don't, click on that create a group and put in the name, right? So we're going to go ahead and put NC uh, open our let's see um NC collaborators um your group type there's different drop down you can choose I just always use general and then professional development grade levels um here is you know you can go in here and put as many grade levels as you want. And I forgot to move on. There you go. And then the level three. So, um, group or collaborators. And then the end. So then. Yeah. Um, you can set it to where anyone can join, which means anyone can join, or need approval, which means that you would have to need approval uh, by the admin of the group uh, before you can join. So I now have this group. I'm going to put it in our chat, and I'd love for you to join it because it's going to be one of the ways we will connect and collaborate will be through our group. Uh, so. The next thing is that um, you can add an image here. If you are an administrator of a group, you can add a cool little image, which I'll do later. But you'll notice now you have your resources, such as folders, um, a discussion board, and you can see the members. And you can see we already have some members. Thank you for coming on in and joining us. Any questions about groups? How many of you have already created groups for your um, public school unit? Mary has, Lindsay has. Awesome. Terry.
Brittany, great. So there are no limits to how many groups you can have on Go Open. So feel free, you know, if you've created one group and maybe, you know, you want to create a group for your instructional coaches or for, you know, your science teachers for high school, feel free to create as many groups as you want. So we, you know, if, if you feel like a specialized group just for this group would be helpful, go ahead and create it for them. All right, so I'm going to put, I'm going to go under hubs and I'm going to show off more county schools for a second. And Carrie, can you unmute or do you need to type in chat a little bit about your awesome hub? Okay, I'm going to unmute you. Give me 10 seconds, maybe. All right. Thank all right. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you so much, Pam, for all of your help with this. Um, you've been a lifesaver. So thank you so much um, for your patience, too. I really appreciate you helping with this. Oh, um, yeah. We're, we're learning together. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. So this is our Moore County Schools hub um, for our digital teaching and learning department. We have a DTL, several di different, excuse me, DTL grants. And so this is where we are putting um, the resources that we create to go along with those grants. We recently held a virtual conference. Typically our conference is in person during our robotics competitions, um, but obviously this year we were unable to do that. So we did our building engineers in K-12 classrooms virtually and we put all of the links there into this group. Yeah, so we have a group too. Um, but yeah, this is our folder where our videos are. And that was super easy to put up all of those um, videos and session links. And with the standards and then, yeah, I'll let you show that stuff. I love it. <laughs> so we just thought that would be a great way for us to have it to share instead of like having to direct everyone to our YouTube channel. They can join our group and go open and see all of the resources. Oh, thank you, Betty. I'm so glad you were able to join us to that with that. And then let's see. Um, we also have our K5 engineering lessons. Because pre COVID, we were having site visits. So you could come and see what STEM and engineering, what that looks like in the classroom. And so we have a group, we have um, our resources there of K 5 lessons. I think there are more in our actual group. And Pam, that's something I want to talk to you about too at some point, um, just differentiating those materials. Mm -hmm. And then we have an ACE cohort, which is a 612 group, separate DTL grant where classroom teachers created their own lessons um, and their those lessons are there. So yeah, that's our that's our hub. We'd love for y'all to join. Here's a link to our group. Um, if you're interested in joining the group. And you can join the hub as well. Yeah. Group. And so you'll see the folders that have the ACE lessons, the conference, and then the engineering design lessons for K-5. Yeah, and I see what you mean, Carrie. Those numbers are a little different. Yeah. So I'll, uh, I'll poke in there and see what's going thank on. Thank you. Thank you. And we just um, announced, like, as part of our grant, we are doing our call for engineering lessons. So we've pushed it out to teachers across North Carolina to submit their best engineering lessons. Um, and I can get the link and share that in the chat as well. So that 
we can post those here and share it um, in Go Open as well. And we're paying for that. So. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. I, I can't wait to see the response you get from that. Thank you. Yeah, we've had several good things so far, K-12. So we're excited. We're hoping to have 150 that's awesome. lessons by April. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you. thank you, Carrie, for sharing. I just wanted to kind of show, because Moore County is kind of like our first really built out authentic hub um, within North Carolina. We have some other hubs and districts that are under development. Like I know Johnson County has a hub as well. Um, so, you know, it's, it's something that you're that you know, thinking, wow, you know, this would be awesome. Um, feel free to reach out to me and we can set up kind of your space on the back end. So a hub is something that I have to create in the back end of the system and work with you with, you know, what groups you want, what collections or resources. And as I kind of shared, I think in our last um, session, uh, a lot of that is built on keywords uh, for our collections. So when you add a keyword tag to a resource, like I'm going to open up this one, and you'll see down here the tags. So these tags are what I use to help curate collections on Go Open and see. Uh, so I have not, Tracy, talked to Iridel Saitsville about a hub. So if you would like to have a hub, um, let's set up some time to chat. Um, since hubs are kind of, you know, they're public and they're out there on our microsite, we do ask um, that your hub be updated um, at least a few times a year with new information. So that way um, it continues to be built um, and interesting for everyone to see since they are kind of more public. Um, but yes, let's get together and talk. Uh, so I do want to, how many of you have added uh, a resource to go open? And if you want to put in the chat, or if you want to raise your hand, and I'll count the number of raised hands, however you, you want to do that, I'm going to just quickly see how many of you have added a resource. All right, five more seconds. Either put in the chat or raise your hand in the little attendee panel. And then I'm going to use that for how long we talk about the next thing. <laughs> all right, so Mary, Betty, and Carrie have all added resources. Anyone else? Last call. Oh, remix. That's awesome. All right. So I'm going to just take a few minutes just to talk about kind of the two pathways of adding resources in Go Open and what they are, because I feel like um, it, it's helpful to know what the two different functions are and how to do them. So when you go up to the top of Go Open, you have this green add OER button, right? And it, it launches two pathways, open author or submit from the web. So what Carrie just showed with the video content for their virtual conference that they did with the sessions, those were actually um, lessons that they submitted from the web because they already had that content that they added on YouTube um, from their YouTube channel. So it, it's easy just to go in and submit from web and you add in like the links, like, you know, your link to your slide deck, your link um, to the YouTube video. If you have something like a Google site, um, something that is already made that you can't really, you know, tweak down into like a Word document kind of format, then going submitting from the web is your best way. Um, the one thing about submitting from the web is that those resources do have to be approved um, before they're published live. So uh, I'm the one who does that, and I block off time on my calendar every other week to approve any resources that have been submitted. 
and they have to be approved because we want to make sure we don't have any copyright um, issues with things that are submitted because we do have folks that submit things that are you know maybe are from like discovery ad or other resources that are free but they're not oer they're not openly licensed so we need to make sure that the resources on our site um are openly licensed so um not as far as i know brenda so if you want to talk to me send me an email about getting a hub together let's do that all right so submit from the web is for those things that are kind of already built on that, you know, like a, a YouTube video, a Google site, um, if you already know of some other open um, education resource that, you know, would be great to add to go open, you can submit from the web, which is basically you start with just the link to what the resource is, you know, so I'm going to go up here to um, All right, here's one of our state board meetings. I'll just use that as an example. And so there's a three-step process here. And it automatically populates based on what you submitted. So like if it's a YouTube channel, it's already gonna pull in the title and description and that kind of stuff. Um, and then we can go down here and attribute add the authors so in you know, North Carolina State Board of Education your conditions of use so for government things um, we our resources are public domain right because it's free and open um, and then we could have go down here and anything with an asterisk is required so subject areas we do have professional development. So if there's things that you want to share and go open that are maybe not exactly for content teaching, but, you know, things that could help others for professional learning, um, then you can definitely add in a subject area for professional development. And then we have standards. We have the digital learning competencies for teachers and administrators, as well as the professional teaching standards um, listed. So you could definitely align any PD resources uh, to those things. So material types, what is it? Um, I think it was presentation, time required, uh, uh, the media formats. So what is it? Video, um, education standards. Here's where we go in and maybe I'm going to align it down here to those professional teaching standards. Just demonstrate leadership. There we go. Add tag. You can add more than one tag. We just go back through that process again of adding multiple standards. Carrie, what are you talking about? Education standards. Um, because I usually try try to update them whenever they get updated. Um, so I know we had some math lessons that we submitted that I think it was like trig, maybe um, statistics. There are a couple that didn't have the standard. Okay. And then maybe are they gonna add the computer science standard as well? So math four was just added. So I don't know if there Perfect. was a math That's four. It. Mm -hmm. And then um, computer science, uh, as soon as those standards, are they finalized yet? Oh, I don't know. They say, I, I, I'll check on them because okay. Thank you. Um, but as soon as everything is approved by the State Board of Education, we try to get it uploaded. It, it does take our vendor around a month-ish um, to get updates on. So, Thank you. Yep. Um, okay, education levels, language, what language is the resource in, uh, accessibility. So this particular video has captions. So I'm going to add that caption tag in there so that we, um, anyone who needs, you know, accessibility can look and find resources that have those. And then you have to agree down here. And so when you click on I agree, you agree to those statements. And then we click on continue. 
And so we can preview the resource. I can replace the cover image. Um, and then right here, it says submit for review, right? So I have to go in and review this resource, make sure it's openly licensed, and then I publish it. So it's not immediate. If you go the other way where we add OER and we go through open author, once you publish it, it is immediately live on the site. Uh, so just, just wanted to point out those two differences. So I do have on our slide deck, I do have right here for add a resource, I have a tutorial. It's a little bit longer because adding a resource is a little bit more complicated than just creating a group. But I do have that tutorial there. Um, but basically to go through the steps. When we uh, start, we have to do our title, right? So um, I'll put this um, never uh, ever. Edition. And you can add a title image, you don't have to. So maybe I'm going to go up here. And I'll just add this one. Yeah. And so our section name um, will be um, content. And right here, you have your text box where, of course, you can put in images, videos, um, math equations. We have a math equation editor in here um, for our, um, everyone who does mathy things. Um, and then down here at the bottom, you have an import from Google Drive, which is what I'm going to demonstrate right here. So you already have the resource um, as a Google Doc. Um, you can go ahead and import it. So I'm going to put Never go. And if this is your first time um, using the either the import from Google Drive or OneDrive, it's going to ask you to connect your account and log in um, and give those permissions, right? So I have this a Google Doc with the um, maybe I'll put down here directions. And call out. Yes, Brittany, please use these. Uh, call out the sentence above. Okay, so one point for each. Statement they have never done. Or each statement they have done. All right. So um, again, if you wanted to attach anything additionally, uh, so you could choose a file or add links here. So maybe if I had a video that went with this lesson planner resource, um, or if I had maybe a handout. Those kinds of things you can add in here. And then you just got to go through the next. And you got to give an overview. This is what the person sees when they search on Go Open and see. So um, we're going to say, you know, uh, quick professional. Icebreaker or see. All right, so our conditions of use. You know, we can um, down here again. I'm going to do professional development material types activity. Language, English, standards, and align this to a DLC. Um, 
go. And then we go down here and breathe. And we publish. Okay. So now this resource is available. And if I wanted to, I can make sure um, I go down into my collections. You see, we have different collections here. Where, where am I looking at? There we go, progression one we have. So I'm going to go in here and look for these resources that we have all about using to open. And I'm going to go down here. All right, so the tag is OERPL. So I'm going to go back to my resource that I just made and then go down here and I'm going to type in OERPL. And within about four hours, this resource should now appear in the hub uh, for OER professional learning. So now that's there in case you want to use that quick icebreaker that I did earlier uh, with your staff for Never Have I Ever. Any questions about kind of the two methods of adding resources to go open and see? Okay, I'm going to jump over to the Padlet and I'm going to refresh it. If there are any things that you can discuss or questions you have, feel free to add them to the Padlet and we're going to take the next little bit of time to discuss what's on here. So I see a good question about what's the difference in a group versus a hub right so a hub um, is a space to organize content such as a collection and groups all about one topic or area right so we have 11 hubs that are published um, so we have a hub for English language learners, right? So if I go click on this hub for English language learners um, and our EL teachers, right, together for ELs, this hub has resource collections for EL teachers, as well as it has um, groups where they can connect and collaborate. So a hub is a space that has to be built on the back end, right, whereas anyone can create a group. And it has both groups and resources about a specific topic um, or that a specific district wants to share their work that they're doing. Whereas a group um, is a more informal kind of collection. And now in the group, you can add resources uh, with the folders. Uh, so I can see where that kind of might get um, a little confusing. But um, a group is more about the informal connection and also collaboration, right, with that discussion board, uh, whereas that hub contains groups and collections of materials. You can also put in hubs, um, we can put videos as well. So if we go look into the global um, education hub, you can see that there's like a little spotlight. Uh oh. My video went unavailable. Oh, isn't that lovely? Um, such is the internet life, right? <laughs> you add something and it gets taken down. Um, but you can see you can add videos as well as um, content collections. You can also add a Twitter feed. So we have a link here to our global education um, Twitter. All right, let me go back to the hub or the Padlet. There we go. See if there's anything else that's been added. All right, I haven't, I don't see any training ideas yet. So 
feel free to pop in there some ideas of resources or things that would be helpful um, for you as one of our uh, collaborators, things that you could use with your um, staff in your public school unit. If I'm going to make something, I want to make sure it's something that people will use. Anyone else want to share a success? I know we had Carrie share, but what else are people using? And feel free if you want to unmute, you can raise your hand in the attendee and I'll unmute you. Or if you want to type in the chat, what's what's the success that you've had with Go Open? Or that you're planning to have? So Brittany enjoyed the CRT Academy, and we're also using GoOpen to house resources for our DLI grant. Great. Um, Tracy is going to share GoOpen with teachers for ELA resources. Brenda's gotten a few lessons from GoOpen. Um, so I'll give you guys a sneak peek while we're waiting on folks to add things, either to the Padlet, the chat, or if you want to be unmuted, raise your hand. Um, so for the spring, I'm really excited about the professional learning we've got coming open. Um, we will have a CRT Academy in the spring. Uh, I'm very excited. Um, New America, which does a lot of great policy work, um, has just come out with a series of eight culturally responsive teaching competencies. And we're going to be revamping some of the materials. A lot of it already fits with these eight cultural competencies, but we're going to be kind of revamping it to kind of frame for that those eight cultural competencies to be the framework for the CRT Academy. So we are going to offer an extended series. So it's going to be one webinar a week for eight weeks uh, for our CRT work, and that will start in February. Uh, so you guys will definitely be the first ones to hear about it as soon as registration is open. Um, I would also love to make sure that there's a lot of instructional coaches um, in our CRT Academy, just because I feel like it's such a great avenue for our instructional coaches and also for our school library or media um, coordinators to kind of have that lens of looking at resources and looking for quality, looking for sources of bias, making sure it's rigorous, high quality uh, materials. So super excited about that opportunity. We also are gonna be partnering with Go Open Virginia for our virtual OER summit. And I'm excited, Go, um, Virginia has a microsite very similar to ours um, and they launched theirs in February of this year. So ours launched in December of last year. So we're almost at the one year anniversary. Um, but Go Open VA is going to be joining us and we're going to have an afternoon of fun open education resources and practices. It's going to be on digital learning day, which is February 25th. So I'll be looking for information coming out soon about that. And then um, some other things that we're working on, we're working on a series of webinars for accessibility and universal design for learning. Because that's something that has come up um, both in the CRT um, academies as well as just looking at instructional uh, design and how we can, you know, look at our lessons that we're building um, and looking at them at through that lens of accessibility and universal design. And we're also working on building out a hub for social emotional learning. So that's going to be a big project that's going to take most of the spring and through the summer. But we really want to work with Castle and um, using their framework for social emotional learning, build out a hub and resources. So those are some sneak peeks that you guys get uh, for joining me today on what I'm working on and what I'm excited about for the spring and summer.
um, as well as just, you know, continually maintaining and updating of standards chains and um, new things happen, uh, keeping the microsite up to date. All right. I'm going to refresh the Padlet here. Well, maybe. <laughs> I thought someone was typing something. Any other thoughts since let me let me close a few tabs. Maybe I've got too many things open with sharing my screen. There we go. Not a question, but an idea. Uh, for detailed grants. Yes, definitely. Um, as we continue to add resources, I think the hub is going to be part of it. Just um, getting enough things in the system for there to be a hub. Lindsay, did you put that up there? Or Julie? Oh, Carrie. Yay. Yes, definitely. Um, that, that's definitely where my idea and my brain is going, that we need to have a hub for all of these things. Great. Any other final thoughts, questions while we have time together? All right, so I do want to share with you on um, these other slides that I've put in the slide deck are kind of more of a resource for you um, in case you want to share um, more about Go Open NC and kind of the ideology and, and pedagogy behind it, right? So we are trying to build this open education practice. And we're, we're building this OEP based on the care model or care framework, um, which basically talks about how everyone, every educator has a voice to contribute and we should be empowering them uh, to contribute and understand that when we use other resources, we need to give attribution to those resources. And then we also need to release. And part of that release is um, understanding that it's not always going to be perfect, right? So a lesson plan, when we look at it on Go Open and see, we might look at it and with the little Amazon star rating system say, oh, you know, this is a three star resource, right? That doesn't mean it doesn't have a place on Go Open because maybe I'm just looking for a quick introduction activity. And, you know, this resource, it doesn't have the depth to be a high quality uh, you know, super thorough resource, but maybe it has a fun introduction activity that's inclusive of all my learners in my classroom, and I want to use it as an introduction, right? So someone's three star might be my five star. Um, so, you know, part of that release is understanding that it's not always going to be perfect and there's always going to be ways that we can improve and that getting it out there on Go Open is that first step. Um, and then, you know, so here's some of those things, right? We're trying to build up our collection. We have over 4,000 teacher authored resources on Go Open. I'm super excited about that number. That number makes my heart happy because that means that teachers are not only just going to Go Open and searching and downloading and, you know, sharing stuff out, but they're also contributing. Um, of course, in doing those collaborations, providing opportunities for continuous improvement. Carrie mentioned that they have, you know, as part of the grant, they're adding, you know, more robotics um, lessons, but we also have some opportunities that are kind of come up in the spring for some more asynchronous learning where teachers can learn how to add resources to go open and then um, potentially earn content, uh, CEU credit for adding resources to go open. So we're hoping that's gonna build not only the resources, but also build some more um, experienced users that are comfortable in adding what we are to the platform. We also have our quality review tools and with the checklist and the rubric. Now, remember the rubric is embedded on the site on every single resource. 
Uh, so that would be a great professional learning um, opportunity just to have a group of teachers go in there and use the rubric to evaluate a resource. Um, just to have that lens of thinking, you know, that there's those 13 areas on the rubric and making sure they're looking um, at a resource through those lenses is pretty powerful. So I encourage you, I've got that linked up here, but that's another great idea for getting the word out. And it's, you've got the checklist as well that you can use as kind of a quick glance if you don't have time to do a full evaluation. And then, you know, we, now we have the holidays coming up. Um, if you are looking for something more to do, to learn, or to share with your staff, we do have three badges that you can earn for the Open NC. There's one for collaborate, one for curating, and one for creating. Uh, so feel free to pass those along or take them. You get a fun little uh, digital badge from Badger if you complete um, the challenge. So just a fun idea that's out there if you're looking to learn more and share. And then finally, we do have um, for today, we have our feedback form. And when you complete the feedback form, you will be emailed um, a CE certificate for your time today. So I'm going to put that link in the chat. I'm going to take one more look at the Padlet just to make sure we don't have any other link burning questions. And I didn't know if anybody from DPSI would like to say anything before we before we leave. I know we have several of you on the call. Feel free to put in the chat and I'll unmute you if you would like to say something. Or you can raise your hand. Going once. Going twice. All right, well, I will stay, stick around for a few minutes in case anyone wants to chat with me. But otherwise, uh, thank you so much for your time and attention today. Thank you for all that you do. I hope that you have a restful uh, break next week. Put the computer away, put the phone away, and uh, have some time to relax and renew yourself. So, thank you.